Good morning, traders. Welcome to Thursday of this beautiful week. Make sure to swing over to ssftg.com slash brief to grab your morning brief levels. Before we jump in, we always need to check what news is going on, where, when, etc. So that way we're not taken by surprise by anything. Uh, and one of the best ways to do that is to simply look at the news calendar. Uh, so at 8.30 this morning, we have the core CPI. The forecast is 0.1%. Previous was 0.2%. Uh, and then at 8.30 as well, we have the initial jobless claims forecasted 725,000. The previous was 712,000. Uh, we've got some medium to uh, you know small news announcements later in the afternoon. Uh, at 1400, the federal budget balance, which is forecasted at negative 200 billion, and then at noon, and I'm backtracking on this on purpose because the WASDE report, Investing.com categorizes it as a moderate volatility. Um, the WASDE report for the agricultural side of things can go nuts. Uh, this is by far. Um, one of the largest news announcements for agriculturals. This should be like three star, no problem. But uh, because it's specific uh, to the agricultural market, it's ranked as a two. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you are an agricultural trader, you do have huge news today at 12 o'clock. Um, but aside from that, it's it's pretty straightforward. We don't have a whole lot going on on the news calendar um, after 8.30. Uh, it calms down a little bit, unless, of course, you're an agricultural trader. Uh, so now we can uh, we can jump into some charts and see what's going on so far this morning for today, Thursday. That's December 10 of 2020. All right, first one up on the list is the NASDAQ. And just as a heads up, the NASDAQ uh, is under rollover conditions, but... Uh, just so that we're on the same page, the S&P is trading more volume on the 12th, the December contract, the NASDAQ's trading more volume on the December. So I'm not planning on rolling over yet. Uh, but that said, rollover for the new March contracts going into 2021 uh, will be rolling over soon. So just to get that out of the way. Uh, as far as the NASDAQ goes, I mean, realistically, yesterday, <laughs> the market just got slammed. Uh, with this giant move to the downside. And this pullback might be something that's kind of necessary, right? When we zoom out and we look at the bigger picture here, uh, I mean, <laughs> realistically, there hasn't been much of a pullback. And every time the previous pullbacks did happen, it was, you know, what, maybe <laughs> 5 10%. It's not that much. Same here, really shallow. We finally get a good pullback. It ends up V-bottoming and <laughs> ripping all the way out. And that's when they start piercing below those previous swings. Uh, we had the same thing over here. We pierced below those previous swings, and then it rocket shipped out. Well, <laughs> guess what happened, right? We pierced below those swings, and now we're finding all of a sudden a bunch of support. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the buyers are going to scream this thing all the way back to the highs. But it is certainly something that should be in the back of our minds of, hey, wait a minute. Uh, the every time so far that they've dipped below those previous swings, it V bottoms and goes screaming back up. Uh, so, I mean, realistically, a lot of buyers are going to be coming in today looking for a bit more continuation. And I can't necessarily say I disagree with them. Uh, we've got a lot of good support here at 12, 3, 13, 50, although a secondary leg is still possible. Uh, we've got resistance at 12, 3, 93, 75 and 424 in the nearer term and then a little bit further up uh, as it starts getting into the five and six hundreds. Next up, we've got the S&P, and the S&P is at the bottom of that wider channel. If we look at the overall channel, we had this marked up a couple days ago, uh, or, or yesterday, rather, uh, in yesterday's morning brief. And we came into this area uh, where the market bounced off, popped up, bounced off, bounced off. It's obvious that there's some support here. It may not be the cleanest thing in the world, but there's obviously support here. The big caveat for the S&P is that it's sitting smack on top of resistance right now. Uh, and there's a lot there's a lot that it's going to have to mess around with. Uh, again, if, if we zoom way, way out and we look at every time there's been a halfway decent pullback, uh, we can kind of categorize what the market wants to do. The S&P tends to, and it's not a surprise by any means, but it tends to take longer uh, to move, right? It takes a lot more time. The NASDAQ was screaming higher, but the S&P is just doop, 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 doo, right? Hanging out. And then it decides to catch up to the party. Uh, so the fact that we're pulling back so aggressively after such an aggressive rally higher for the S&P, that creates a bit of a problem because realistically, you can already kind of see the start of the potential channel. Right, right there, and then coming down from the top, it's already kind of beginning. Uh, so as far as the S&P goes, I mean, they might still be able to scream it higher, don't get me wrong, 
but realistically, I think the best the buyers can really hope for for now uh, is that we go into a range and try to stay above the lows of that channel. If the buyers are able to defend down there and we get a nice pop higher, higher low, uh, then sure, we've got a shot to, to rock it back up towards the highs. Along the way, obviously, there are some levels of resistance. Uh, we're cycling off of one right now at 36.78. The next one above that's 36.95 quarter, and then 37.08 quarter uh, all along the way. The only one that's kind of in the middle, and it's based off previous structure more than anything else, is the 36.95 quarter. Uh, I would prefer to see 37.08, but uh, it just depends on how far it wants to move. Over on gold, we have an extremely aggressive descending wedge that just broke out not too long ago from yesterday into this morning. And again, sim similar situation to the S&P. We've got that giant rally up, it balanced, and then fell apart. It's a, a I mean, it, it's almost exact. It maybe went a little bit faster, uh, but realistically, we had this big dump down. Uh, the only difference here is that the S&P made a new low, gold didn't. Uh, and not only did it not make a new low, it's also defending another higher low. Uh, so there's obviously some interest going on here. It might just be a shorter term wedge. Not sure yet, uh, given the way that this is looking. It appears as though the shorter term wedge would be something along the lines of this. Uh, but again, after such a strong moving day, chances are the best that they're going to be able to hope for is that we go into a range. Uh, sellers will be looking off of 1844.7. Buyers will be looking off of 1828.8. If the market does want to go a bit further up, sellers are still interested all the way up to 69.3, 70s. I mean, there's a lot of room for sellers to try to get this thing to rotate back down again. And then over on crude oil, we've got this really nice bear channel, which has been hanging out for a few days, and the market finally made its way to the top of it. Uh, it took a little while, right? We rotated off the lows on yesterday's drop uh, and cycled right back up, higher low, actually. Uh, higher low, higher low, uh, and then we got the break to a higher high. So the way that this move kind of worked out seems a bit more like an overnight kind of wedge uh, with, a, with an aggressive breakout higher. We're at the top of the channel. We're at structural resistance. We're at the previous major swing high. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, 46.25 is a brick wall of orders. Uh, and then above that, we've got 46.51. Uh, again, another zone of potential interest. We did just cycle off the lows of the channel. Now we're back to the highs. If it's going to continue this cyclical move, then it should start looking to rotate back down. Um, the, the big difference here is that we've got such good structural higher lows uh, in this really, really strong wedge breakout that if it pulls back, I've got to give the buyers the benefit of the doubt, even at 4580 to try to get a little more continuation up. Uh, but given that we're cycling off of falling resistance, it would probably be a lower high and then maybe a breakdown, and that might create the breakdown point. So it's kind of a multifaceted level of interest here going into crude oil uh, and kind of figuring out if it wants to respond here or if it's going to break higher, or if it's going to collapse, what it, what it kind of wants to do. Uh, it's sort of a waiting game. It is a, a lot more range bound, so we're at the highs. Makes more sense to be a seller up here along with everything else. Uh, but if it fails, don't be surprised to see it rush back up to 47s. The euro is rallying its way back up off of the bottom of the channel. This channel has been in play for a little while now. Uh, the highs and lows are very well structured. And it appeared as though uh, the market was trying to create somewhat of like a bear flag, but it just went on too long. Uh, and now we've got this upward channel kind of coming off of the lows. Major support at 1.20765. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, if the market does want to really, really fall apart, then you've got that giant 1.2 level, uh, which is probably going to be a gargantuan level of psychological support resistance. Uh, but as it stands, we're cycling off the bottom of the channel. The natural progression forward would be the top of the channel. Uh, so bulls have a little bit of a case here to try to continue it higher. Just don't lose sight of the fact that currently the trend is bearish. I, I, I know, we're talking about the euro bearish. Did that come out of John's mouth? Uh, this is more like a long-term flag pullback, right? The euro's been screaming higher, but we've got a nice little flag formation, and the bulls are trying to continue this rally back to the highs uh, to get that trend to continue. It's just a bit early, right? We still have the downtrend. There's still a down channel. Nothing's really breaking out of this. So until then, the buyers have an objective back to the upside around 1.2134. Uh, and if they can get above that, then maybe up to the 21635, 21765 up there at the highs. Uh, if sellers are able to control off of that high, then probably back down to 1.20765 uh, and just kind of ping around back and forth inside there. 
And then finally, we've got Bitcoin with a very another market <laughs> with an aggressive descending wedge pretty much straight across the board today with those. Uh, and the the big thing that's standing out here for Bitcoin is that it tried flushing lower below this major swing. Um, in that major swing, remember, we had this wedge drawn up initially, uh, and this major swing was kind of the starting point of that. And Bitcoin tried breaking down through it. They landed into previous structural support and then just ripped right back up again. Uh, so with that strong rally back above that major zone of interest, that's kind of like a breakout failure. And now it's a break in pullback. Right. So now we've broken back in now looking for the pullback for continuation back up. That's off 18,144 uh, and looking for moves potentially all the way back up towards that 19,000 mark. Uh, I mean, going into December, you know, I mean, these higher lows, this is the shot for the buyers to take it back. But if they fall here and they, they falter and lose their ground, then we might be off to that bigger pullback that we were talking about on the, I believe it was the monthly brief, uh, looking for that deep, deep dip down into the 16,000s. We got to 17s. We're getting close. Just need a little bit more. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for today. Like we always say, stay safe out there. Keep those stops in play and let the winners run. I hope you have a fantastic day of trading today and I will see you all tomorrow morning. Thanks.